Michael, how's the squad looking for this one? Yeah, really good. Kamar Roof back in training. Obviously, Yanis has had an extra week as well, so delighted with that. Uh, so we've got a strong squad. We'll pick a strong team as well. Won't be too many changes. Positive news on Kamar as well, because that's a sort of quicker return than you would have hoped for originally. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously... Uh, the first thing was just being pain-free and then a little bit of unopposed training. The last few days he's gone opposed and he's looking sharp, Kem. Let's hope that this is the uh, the start of him getting a, a clean bill of health for a, a longer period of time. Is John Suter any closer to a return to the match day squad? Not just yet, no. He's still training in isolation, similar to Tom. Uh, their their situation's just dragging out a little bit, so no like specific update on that. They're, they're doing individual work at the moment. You say you won't make too many changes. Does that just show the importance of the Scottish Cup to yourself and the club? Yeah, it's massively important. I think uh, we want to pay respect to how important it is to us as a club uh, and the competition as well. It's a competition, obviously, we won after a number of years in the summer, and it's obviously uh, one of the trophies that we we feel we can win again this year. John Lundstrom, okay. John won't be available this weekend. We we're hoping to be back for the Livingston game, so we had some good news on that one. It was a sore one. He went to block a shot and rolled his ankle. At the time, you're thinking we won't take any risk with it because obviously we had a particularly strong bench with Malik and Glenn Kamara on it. So hopefully he'll be back in time for Livingston next week. He'll definitely be fit for the cup final at the end of the month. I think before you said you hoped that John Suter would be back for St Johnston game. Yeah. Is he, is he had a setback or something? No, not, not so much. It was almost like he needs a bit more in the tank, I think, in terms of his general fitness before we was to throw him out there in the game. It's all right training with us and doing little bits and stuff like that. And then obviously uh, we've just got to make sure that people react well. to the, They're almost going for a pre-season again, so there'll be ups and downs in that, but nothing to concern me. Do you, have, do you have a time frame on the likes of John and Tom Lawrence and um, Rid Van Yilmaz at all? Rid Van will be uh, probably another three weeks, uh, which will, will, will be good to get him back. So obviously I haven't seen or worked with Rid Van at all and he's a player that I've got high hopes for. So uh, hopefully he'll be back in three or four weeks. Tom and John, I don't want to put a time frame on it. Uh, cup action this weekend, um, how, how much, how big is the determination in the squad to you know, retain the trophy after finally getting their hands on it last year. Yeah, huge. Obviously, we're in one cup final, and, and by the end of the season, we'd like to think we can get to another one. I think um, the, the competition is really important for us, really important. We're four wins away from a trophy. That's how we see it. We need to make sure we perform to our best on, on Sunday to make sure we're one less game towards one. Is that as much about creating a mentality of winners and consistent winners as well going on and retaining this trophy? I think so. I think, listen, you never know how many years you've got left, you know, in, in the game. And regardless of where you are in your career, we're a club that thinks we can win, thinks we can get to cup finals. And we've obviously got one to look forward to and we want to add to that with another one. And ultimately, when you get there, you want to be picking up the trophy as well. So I think when you're at this club, it's, it's relentless. I think since I've come back, we've played 12 games and won 11. We have to just keep winning. In terms of... Uh Partick Thistle, do you expect anything different given it's a team from a lower league? I know Corley really well. He's a guy that I've known uh, when I first came up um, to Glasgow. He's become a bit of a friend in that time as well. He sent me a lovely letter when I got my job at QPR, which was lovely of him to do. A nice gesture that managers do for each other. I thought he showed a touch of class. He's someone that we've we've loaned players to before and loaned players to this year. He's someone that I know outside of, of football and I wish him well. I look at his squad and they've got a lot of SPL experience in the team. So I think it'll be an interesting game. They're bringing 2,500 fans as well, which shows the support they've got. Um, we just need to keep pushing our standards and, our, and not dropping from it in terms of our attitude and energy. I'm still looking for a greater uh, level of performance, albeit I think at times we've played very well. I still want to push for more. Do you think it'll add to that sort of derby atmosphere with, with the bigger away crowd as well? I think it's nice, yeah. I do think it's nice. And I think, uh, you know, we've already seen a big upset in this cup already uh, in the previous round. And, and looking at the, the competition at the moment, when there is a couple of upsets, then it opens up the, the hopes and the dreams for everybody. Um, so 
I think it's a, a, an interesting tie. We just need to make sure that we're, we're at our best and we get through. Michael, can I just ask your thoughts on the European Super League has reared its head again? Do you think, given I mean, you've got many, much experience at many big clubs, including this one, do you think in the future this will continue to come up again and again about reforming football in Europe? I haven't really seen too much about this new proposal. Obviously, it's only come out in the last 24 hours, and I'm not up to speed on it to, to comment on it. But there's obviously something in the water because it's not going away, is it? If it's not one format, it's another. So uh, the Champions League's being reformatted again after next season. So it seems there's a big urge for, for the teams outside of England um, to, to create something. And I, I don't know what our stance is, so I wouldn't want to comment further on that. Just on, sorry, just on uh, Yilmaz, is, is he okay? And obviously there's a lot going on in Turkey just now. Is there a, a duty of care? It might not be in where he's from, but do you just have to, to keep an eye on him and make sure everything's okay? Yeah, of course. Like You, you know, you send the condolences and we've all seen the really sad news and the, and, and the bits on, on TV as well. It's tragic, isn't it? And had a little conversation with Ridvan on it, not a, not a big one. He's out training and, and, uh, and he's close to a return and I think that's where he's focused on. Just on Ridvan, Michael, he's quite a different player to Borna in terms of the, what he can offer the team. Do you think he can give Rangers a different tactical dimension at left back, something completely different uh, out there? Yeah, look, I think we have an outstanding one in Borna and we have an outstanding young one in, in Ridvan as well. He was bought with the eyes on the future, of course, and, and lots of competition. We lost a fantastic one in Calvin Bassey as well in the summer. So. Um, <clears throat> I think just before he got injured, he, he started to excite the fans with what he could bring. He's a, you're right, he's a different type of attacking fullback. He's someone that arrives and runs past a wide player, where Bourne is someone who's got that fantastic crossing. It's a lovely blend to have, and then you'd pick and choose which one you would use and when. Yeah. It's one of the biggest challenges, Michael, in the Cup, that the teams that you come up against sometimes aren't the ones that you play every week, so that familiarity isn't really there. Yeah, it's quite nice actually. Obviously, you play a lot of the teams in the Division Three, definitely three, but some four. And if you draw them in the Cup as well, it becomes a bit of a groundhog because uh, obviously you know so much about each other, and it can sort of make for at times a stale game or a very stuffy game. It's nice to play a team that's not in our in our league, but also we know in that they've got nothing to lose coming to Ibrox this weekend. I'm sure that's what Corley will be telling his team. Um, We've got everything to gain as well. It's making sure that we we, um, we play justice to the importance it, it has for us at Rangers. You've hinted that you'd like to have both Cholak and Morelos up front. Is this an opportunity to test out that theory? It's definitely an opportunity for Cholak to play. Uh, I think he's waited frustratingly on the sidelines to get an opportunity because Alfredo has been in good form. And in all fairness to Antonio, he's not been 100% fit in the time I've been here. Um, but he's had a really good 10 days now of solid training. He looks strong. So early team news will be Cholak will play. Whether he plays with Morelos or not, we'll, we'll decide nearer the time. Michael, you'll have a lot of years ahead of you in management. I, I imagine managers always learning, constantly learning. What would you say in this small section of time over the last couple of months since you took the job has been one of your kind of key learnings as a, as a young manager? I think obviously... Uh, the exposure that it gives you and um, and the demands on, on, on your time is important. So I think you have to have your ideas for football very much aligned with your staff and the club because you don't want to be fighting that because there's a lot of things that come to you as a manager you don't see, a lot of personal things. We we spoke obviously there about Ridvan and we, we've had players who have had setbacks with injuries long term. We've had others that are out of contract. So you have to manage all of that and you need a really good staff around you. You need to be aligned as a club, which we are. And uh, in terms of the football side, I, I feel I thought I was a good fit for this club because obviously I'd worked here before and I knew a lot of the people. So uh, I think the job has not surprised me in any way. The three game weeks when I have to do three press conferences and three post mass press conferences and then three interviews and stuff like that, that becomes a little bit tired because um, you know that you, you answer a lot of the same questions. But outside of that, I'm loving the job. It's nice to be living back in Scotland. I'm enjoying working in the league. I think, as I said previously, there's a lot of good managers and, and good players in the league, and, I, and, and I'm enjoying being back, being part of it. Yeah, you mentioned the word relentless a few minutes ago. 12 games so far, your 13th against Partick Thistle, 11 wins, 1 draw, 
and just highlight the busyness of it. How do you actually switch off and just take a breather from your family and things as well? I imagine. Do you find it hard to kind of set aside that time, and how do you switch off? I live in a really nice part of the country. Out, I'm a bit like a hide and seek champion. You wouldn't be able to find me outside of um, my job. I like that because it enables me to go to the countryside and spend time with my family as well. You know, and uh, it's, it's great having young children. They tend to take your mind away from things a little bit. But the rest of it, I love being here. I am a football obsessive. I like being in the club. It is what drives me. I don't see what I do as work, and I think that's if you can do that in life, then you're very lucky. And I think. Anyone that's a, a football player or a football manager needs to remind himself of that when we're moaning about travelling and staying in nice hotels and playing in football matches that are fantastic events that a lot of people would love to be in our position. That's never lost on me. You know, the, I, the, I'm living really uh, what I wanted to live as a young boy, so I'm, I'm a very fortunate person. Stephen Gerrard's been linked with a few jobs about getting back into, into football management. Have you spoken to him recently and, and do you think he's ready to do that? I haven't spoke to him recently and he, he looks like he's enjoying some time with the family which I think when you consider the amount of sacrifice he's had over the years is, is probably the right thing to do. I think Stephen's going to go on to be a real big success as a manager. I haven't spent time with him. Uh, I think there's been some unfair uh, things thrown at him. I worked underneath him, uh, not alongside him. He was the boss, uh, then Gary, then myself and that worked really well for four years in two clubs and I expect Stephen and, and his staff um, to go on and have a successful future. You know, there's a lot of speculation in the air, but you know, no one would be more happier than me when Stephen gets back in.